All right. So I felt Spanish too, guys. It's not like I, I, I'm like I got any other languages here to talk to us back up. Relax, relax Chris. You, you, you're sounding like you're saying like, oh, I, I've, I've got some of my best friends are Indian. Relax. You don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Indigo made the beat. everybody welcome to another edition of the heroes peak podcast and this is a peak edition of the podcast because we have all five hosts what are we doing here today and i think we have like four fifths of people watching the the actual homework but so just so you know today we are what we had watched rrr uh, i watched it off of netflix it was in the theaters for a short time this is the Bollywood, Tollywood, um, I'm not exactly sure what what the wood it came from, but this is the uh, Indian movie that is making waves right now everywhere. Um, <laughs> what do I say about it? I don't know. I will let Mike take the reins because I don't want to insult an entire group of people. Why Mike? Right. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I told Mike already. Yeah, he, be more racist, offered. why don't you? <laughs> yeah, I said I would correct you on the names. <laughs> this oh, this is, is, is dedicated to Mike's people. All right, let's introduce your Mike host is today. An Indian. I'm not. We're gonna what start with. The set. I'm waiting for for you to answer the question. <laughs> This is not going well. All right. I we're going to... Oh, this is great. <laughs> this is why... This is why, this is why, this is why we want everybody segment. on. <laughs> All right. We're going around the horn. Introduce yourself. We're going to go with Mike. How are you doing, Mike? Not being Indian, I guess. That's for sure. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Am I wrong? Yes, you are. You're very wrong. <laughs> You're very wrong. I thought we had this conversation, and all right, never mind. I'll shut the fuck up. Now before I... <laughs> yes, technically, <laughs> technically, if you want to, yeah, if you want to get technical, great, great grandparents are from India. Yes. Where do you think his look comes from? <laughs> I, I'm literally not even going to say anything because I feel like I'm going to insult. But I thought we had this conversation, and you never mind. See, now I'm going to shut the fuck up. See, I was confused. I no. thought he was just Canadian. This is Soul Glow. <laughs> This is just soul glow, folks. It's so glow. Soul glow. <laughs> you got that conk in his hair. That's right. <laughs> All right. And uh, coming up, coming to us all the way from California, it's Brooks. How you doing, Brooks? By the way, I am Polish Great. and German. <laughs> in case you wanted to know, because that's what we're doing today, right? I didn't. But... <laughs> Thank you. I like that, Chris. I like that. Cause that's what um, we're doing. That's yeah. all it is. I, I mean, just some background work. I'm just regular white. So. Just regular white, no, not that no German white. Regular, white. regular white. Are you from off white? You from Caucasoid? Wales? What does that mean? I don't even she, know. What, no, Wales. She she came out of a bag of flour, I guess. I don't know. Regular white, yeah. What am no Keith? What am I? I'm a corporate white girl. <laughs> 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 When all right speaking all right keith Ready how you doing go. keith i just you're next what up? glad to be back glad to be back looking forward to some yeah, shenanigans <laughs> we're getting there we're getting there quick and of course it's james at the end there how you doing james yeah the haitian of the pod <laughs> shout out to serena taking her first oh, exam tomorrow at howard yes, yes. Damn. serena good luck Damn. I know. All right. And as I said at the beginning, we are going to be talking about RRR, which is the, um, uh, it's called Rise, Roar, Revolt, a, a fictitious story of two legendary revolutionaries and their journey away from home before they started fighting for their country in the 1920s. 
Um, <clears throat> so as we go through this, this uh, movie was uh, directed by Mike. <laughs> directed by Mike. I feel like we need to get a whole clip of Chris just saying the names so wrong. That's what I'm trying to avoid here. American ones wrong sometimes. Oh. It, it's got to <laughs> be someone. It's got to be someone. Else. Oh, Mike, you're on. You're mute. His name is SS Roger Mooley. So you'll know he directed some other good things. Uh, I think the one you saw recently as well. Yeah, yeah. I just watched both. Yeah, yeah, both yeah, uh, yeah. one and two of. Bahabuli. Yeah, Bahubali. Uh, that was pretty Bahubali. wild. Bahubali. Yeah. Bahubali. Bahubali. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm getting there. I only, I only listen to crowds of people chant the name, and I still can't get it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All so right. he's known for his. That, these are like these over the top, you know, outrageous uh, action sequence movies. Like, put he puts uh, Zack Snyder to, he's, to shame. He's, that's what I was going to say. He's the, that version, Bollywood's version of Zack Snyder. That's right. right. Or close to it. With less uh, above that, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like I, I was thinking this is more, it, it felt like if you, Hamilton by way of 300 when I was watching this thing. <laughs> Holy uh, shit. That's a good analogy. Hamilton by way of 300. So um, <clears throat> this stars N.T. Rama Rayo Jr., <laughs> as uh, Bahim, am I am I okay. near near close? And then uh, Ram Sharon Tasia as Raju. Okay. <laughs> How bad am I doing? No, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. Um, and so yeah, this is literally like an alt history. Um, two revolutionaries finding each other. In, in glorious bromance soulmates and starting uh, to kick out the, the British colonials, 1920 India. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? You've heard of this. You've seen this, right? You know what that is. It is unavoidable. It is your destiny. Is this not why you are here? Do or do not. There is no choice. Not the shit off. All right. Let's, let's just get into it, because the only thing... Uh, like watching this movie, you you just get slowly sucked into its three hour long, just epicness, scene by scene, and just genre mixing, bombastic story, with everything. And, and we've 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 talked about uh, uh, directors and creators who make wild scenes. We've mentioned Zack Snyder specifically because he does that. He likes he likes the slow motion, make, likes to make things big and bombastic. But the big difference here, and, and for anybody who hasn't watched it, you really need to take, take time, go and watch it. The difference is not only do the action scene gets this treatment, but every emotional scene gets this treatment. Dance numbers, the, the friendship uh, uh, meet up, meet up gets the same treatment. Everything is as big as everything else. There's no slowing down. There's no low point. It, everything is that big. So that's that's what I'll say. And I'm gonna go around the horn. Everybody, just kind of tell me as you started to watch it. At what point, like, did you go, oh, this is this is real different? Because <laughs> I know you did at some point. I'm gonna I'm gonna let Keith go first. What did you think as you started watching it, as you moved through this movie? Well, I mean, it, 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 to me, the outrageousness started pretty, pretty, pretty early, pretty early. Um, <laughs> in that beginning scene, when he's mm -hmm. like, yeah, arrest that guy. <laughs> <laughs> And, he and you're proceeded. like, yeah, who's going to arrest that dude? <laughs> and he proceeded to go and beat everyone's ass that was in that. I, I, you can't even call it a mob. The the police station was surrounded. And he took the time to to literally manhandle each and every person that was there <laughs> and come back with the dude. I was like, yeah, this is the John Wick 3 that I deserve. 
Um, wow. <laughs> yeah. Never let that go. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I, I call that scene good. the ultimate, the ultimate force of will. Like I just watched that scene and it wasn't like he was, it, he wasn't like ninja-ing the guys where they had no chance. He was literally dogpiled, beat up. He was getting the his whole ass beat. He was, you know, it was very, you know what it was? To me, it was more of a, that was a Punisher-esque scene. I knew you were going to say that. A character who gets beat. I, I read right through Keith. He was like, <laughs> he's going like, to say not John Wick. He's going to say Punisher. Like, yeah, like, like, my superpower is never giving up. <laughs> like, that's, like, that's, that's that was a total literally. anime scene right there. <laughs> but once, right. like, look, so, so 10 minutes in of this three-hour movie, I knew exactly. <laughs> I knew exactly what was, what it was gonna be. So I prepared myself for the outrageousness, which didn't, which I didn't mind too much, because, oh man, well I want to go beyond the question. Go ahead. Okay, all right, James, what did you think as you started this this giant uh, trek of a movie? Did well, you know anything I didn't go about in it? As cold as, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't go in as cold as Keith. I, I was at the apex of when all the trailers were out and the reviews. You know, and there's like parody reviews of it. So I kind of knew that it was going to be over the top. I didn't know it was three hours. I really didn't know it was three hours <laughs> until I sat down and watched it. And I caught it on a Saturday afternoon right after the gym. So I was already pumped, ready to go. And um, yeah, it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. And then some. <laughs> and then more of it. But the, the outrageousness. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Look it around. Look it around, Odie. There's a lot of outrageousness to follow. A lot to follow. All right, Brooks, what was your what was your entrance to this movie like? Um, I mean, I feel like in that scene where they're like, get him, and the dude like jumps over the fence, you know, into the mob that kind of Keith was talking about. I, like, I was so angry that the mob didn't kill the police officer <laughs> that jumped over. Ooh, they're doing was... like Westbrook in the Lakers right now. <laughs> Shut up, James. I was, I was, I was, I was just so angry about that, and like, I don't know, like, I, I just was like screaming at the TV about that. I'm ignoring now. I'm just gonna ignore you, James. Anything you say later <laughs> is I'm ignoring. Um, Probably better. I, yeah, I was like really upset by that scene, like physically upset, like yelling at the TV, like take his fucking baton. What is wrong with you? Like take that shit, beat his ass, kill him. With a stick. Yeah. He did all that with, with a stick. I, I can see yeah. Brooks yelling a cab at the television over and over again. Wow. <laughs> I can see that too. <laughs> so no. yeah, that's my initial thought. All right, Mike, as the person who actually probably knew what was going on because you texted it to the <laughs> chat, what was your entrance yeah, to this I mean, movie like? So this was, okay, this for me growing up watching Bollywood movies, this was like the Snyder cut of Bollywood to me watching <laughs> Whedon's Avengers all my life. So this was just... <laughs> So, because most Bollywood movies have that level of outrageousness. They just don't have the budget and the special effects like that this one had. Mm -hmm. So this one took it to another level. And he does this with all his films. You saw this in Bahubali as well, right? Mm -hmm. So he's, they give him this money and he, and he, he runs with it, right? So it, it wasn't surprising. It's not surprising to me at all what, what the guy did, right? And what, all we did here was establish what a badass he is. So basically, we we have this badass character. We want to show the audience he's a badass. And what better way than him to storm through a crowd of 10,000 people, kicking everybody's <laughs> ass, getting beat up along the way until he reaches his target, right? So mission accomplished there. All hey, right. Real quick, Mike, you know what yeah. this reminds me of? Mm -hmm. Real quick. Um, the other Asian movies, when we were growing up watching the, uh, the Kung Fu flicks where... It always starts by introducing you who the main 
protagonist and antagonist is before it gets into the story. Right. And it gives you the name, right? And then you see the bad guy, he murders and kills like a whole bar. Then you see the good guy who may or may not have already been trained to give you his story. And then the actual plot develops from there. That's the feeling I had watching it with that first 10 minutes. I was like, because right after that moment, they give you the first R, right? <laughs> yeah. Or rise, whatever uh, it was. But we established oh, who the good. bad guy is. It's the, the British colonialists in the beginning when they they take the little girl from the village, right? And the and the oh, that's that's the super bad guy. Yeah, yeah he's well, he's well, the main antagonist of the movie, right? Him and his wife. Yeah. So. And this is what I mean by every beat, every emotion gets the same treatment. So we're going to go through this by kind of the big, bombastic. Um, what's the word? Uh, uh, set pieces. Sorry, I love that word. I I, I coming up with thesaurus and shit, and it's like, oh, I'm not fantastic. All right. Anyway, so we open on what is a relatively small scene with the with the little girl entertaining the the British the British lady, the governor's wife. We I don't think we ever get a real name, but they basically steal the kid for a couple pennies. And what makes this seem huge is the evil. Once the governor stops the soldier from shooting the girl. And he goes into this speech about the cost of a bullet, which is something that that a through line to this entire thing, which is works out really well throughout this entire entire movie and showing just how like mustache twirling evil this guy is just before we get these two giant set pieces of, OK, so this is how evil this guy is. And these are your. These are the other major players, and this is how badass these other players are. So now you've set this world up in the ultimate of evil versus the strongest of wills in two parts. And I thought that was a really great setup before they hit the RRR, like the the rise um, thing. Uh, now you guys have already talked about the him uh, re. <clears throat> Uh, Raju, Raju, is it with? Do you pronounce the J? Is it Raju? Uh, you're on mute. You're yeah, mute. mute. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it's like Raju, like a soft J, not Raju. Okay, right. It's not like yeah. Raju. All right. So I felt Spanish too, guys. Raju. It's not like I, I, I'm like I got any other Raju. languages here to to, to yeah, back up. Relax, relax Chris. You, you, you're sounding like you're saying like, oh, I. I I've got some of my best friends are Indian. Relax. We don't need to. <laughs> I mean, we don't. Oh, even... I'm all so bad at Spanish. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad at all languages. Bad at HTML too. All right. Anyway, <laughs> so um, C plus plus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Anyway, I loved Bahim's um. Uh, entrance where where the guy comes up to the the I don't know who, what level he was and he's like starts telling the story almost like the John John Wick entrance when the kid goes up to his dad and he starts and the dad's like you don't know what you started there's this you you fucked with John Wick that's not the dude you want to fuck with and so we get this kind of backstory about who Bahim is and then we get him basically capturing a Bengal tiger with his bare hands and that opening after like just just a great secondary um build up to to our characters um so do you guys any of you guys have anything to say about Bahim's opening about the governor anything like that it was very uh shocking I, I wasn't sure I was gonna get this level of like violence I thought it's gonna be over the top I watched it with with the Eric and he cursed, you know, he, he's trying to, you know, not cuss in front of his dad, as a <laughs> 13 year old, but that's the first time he was like, oh, fuck. Was right during that scene. And I, <laughs> I was you like, let Eric one. cuss in front of you? I was like, you get this one and only this one. Because that's that scene when the, the little, the, the mother gets freaking clobbered. Bam. That's very graphic. Like full Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah, I, I did not see that level of violence in, in this movie being. Um, I know that was like shocking. That was a shocking level 
right kind of at the start. I mean, it was shocking, but it like also wasn't shocking. I mean, it that's not true. It is very shocking. Even if you're like, you already like know that that's how like, you know, the British. colonialism, colonialism yeah. was and the British and colonized. Like, even if you were like, that's right. It's like, you already know that those things happen, but just to see it like that in that way um, is shocking. I mean, I, I'll be honest. I thought it'd be more like Miss Marvel's version of events and colonialism and like, you know, blah, <laughs> blah, white brush. Not like what I got in this movie. I didn't think they would go that, you know, the, 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 that detail. It's, it. it's weird. Like, I feel like the movie would have been more entertaining and funny for me, if not for the colonialist. Because um, I found myself getting mad. Getting mad at like, yeah. yeah. Then, then mission so, accomplished, right? So, yeah, I guess that, I guess that was yeah. really mission accomplished because, like, well, and they also on that same topic, they did a great job of dragging out Raju's um, uh, story through that whole first half, where you're like Brooksy was, where you're kind of mad at the guy. You're like, how how can you be doing this? Like something's like you're hoping there's another side of the coin. I know, like it, story wise, you may be thinking, yeah, I know there's a he's a good guy, but like just within the in the story itself, they did a good job of making him hold on to that bad guy role just long enough. Um, I, and so I this kind of brings oh, the story, story go ahead, done Keith. Very well. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm this is very sad. I, I actually think like where the movie was pushed to be like it's it's obviously very like uh very off the wall or this that and the other but the core of it is actually a good movie like it's a good storyline it's uh, the the way they weave certain things in like like finding out that he was really like a good guy and that that was like he masked himself in in this courageous you know what I'm saying like I I like how they did that discovery. I I I, I like how and, and once they were fighting, I knew they would get back together and I was wondering how it would get done. And I like how they did that too. Like, you know, with the with the fiance talking and you know, like, oh he's and then him realizing that, oh, he's from here and putting the whole thing together, like I thought the, the elements of the core story of itself were done very well yeah yeah really yeah. these two these two leads sell the whole thing if if they're not picking up if they're not able to carry both the uh uh above above the the world action at the same time as selling they care about this friendship that they've built then you're not going to get a, a a reasonable story. You can you can laugh it's, at the, it's phenomenal uh, in this day yeah. and age. You have an actor that can do both. That can do that fight, and you believe that they're physically able to do. It's not stuff. It's not all stunt performers, and do the action when it's like very very dramatic. Which to me, I was like, wow, these dudes. I've never heard of these guys before, and I realized, oh, because I'm an American. Because <laughs> I'm an American. <laughs> American. So the the next part I want to bring up is. So we go through, there are two scenes after this, and they're really important because they kind of build the core of the story of what's going to happen. Is you start with a, these two guys see each other as, as a big, the next big blockbuster scene is they see each other across, across a river, and there's a child in danger, and they just can communicate. They're like, and they just know what they're, they want to do. There's this great, huge rescue scene and we've seen that that was kind of the scene that that was in the trailers that was kind of yep. where my expectations were lying was this one big bombastic action scene and i was like okay that's cool that's really awesome but what followed it up is what is what first turned me going what am i watching and that was <laughs> the buddy comedy buddy comedy the longest, like, uh, scene the that I, yeah, montage. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you very much. The longest buddy comedy montage I think I've ever seen. And I would agree. I was like, 
okay, so this is th- <laughs> this this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna sit on each other's shoulders shoulders. We're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna <laughs> oh, race. Eric, I was like, this is what and... bromance is about. Right. I was like, Tom, this is what bromance is, not the other stuff you see on TikTok. <laughs> right. But before we I, I, I go on to you guys ask questions, I want to point out that there's a musical number during that during that montage that literally plays out the entire plot for you guys. And if you and if you sat and like you know, I subtitles on yeah, and I'm like reading and they're like, that. are they going to recognize at each other? Are they going to fight? What's going to happen? <laughs> like this entire setup right. is just sung out in, in this in this little uh, song. And I thought that was interesting. I've never really seen something like that. And so I'm going to go around the opposite direction. I'm going to start with Mike. Is that something that happens? Like, do, do you have songs that just kind of sing out the 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 plot as it's supposed to go and also what did you think of this well i i don't know if they sing out the plot but i mean it's pretty standard for bollywood movies to have about four or five musical numbers in them so um and most of them flow with the story just like any musical would right so they're they're not just like background songs these are you've got the actors performing and singing and dancing you know, and singing these lines that are integral to the to the movie. So, and a lot of times it's basically love songs. So the man and the woman are meet, they break into song, they start professing their love, stuff like that, right? So, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty standard that a middle play out. Dance battles pretty standard too. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I I I I enjoyed the intensity. Of their dance battle, like it was, it mm-hmm. was very. It was Key, very, when the rest of us stopped with breaking two, and he just kept, just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> and, and breaking two would have had a whole different dynamic if it was like you battle until one person drops. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. This isn't yeah. just like waiting for cheers. This yeah. is like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keith, you can bring it back. I'm good. I just bring it back. <laughs> and, and we'll say that the 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 talent the these guys are full on classic talented in the sense that like in the uh, 50s television you had to be able to dance, sing, as well as act and all of the above. And that's what these guys are doing. They're doing it all. So, uh, Brooks, did you get this far? Did you get through the buddy? Uh, buddy montage. Uh, yeah, the like I got through that that dance scene, and that was it. That's when my boyfriend was like, "We are done watching okay. this." Movie. No, but did you see the best friends but, montage? The best friends montage. That should have been before that. that. Before yeah. that, yeah, yeah, before that's the, before the dance. Yes, montage of them being you best can't... friends and working out together. Okay, and maybe running and playing. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was. It was yeah, they were frolicking. There was a little frolicking in there. Frolicking—that frolicking. is the yeah. word. It was definitely frolicking. <laughs> yeah, some bromance. It was very, happening. very bromantic. Yeah, but not creepy. I mean, that's. But still weird. But it's it's okay for guys to like you know express their friendship in a bromantic way. <clears throat> But see, that's that's where I. This is so far afield from an American production because I yes. have never seen <laughs> Keith, that much. Keith, I got a bike and a horse. What are you doing on tomorrow? <laughs> Out outside of Rocky and and Apollo running on the beach, I have not seen or or Goose and Maverick playing volleyball. Goose like and those, Maverick. Yes, this that, is that, that exactly is this like level. That. Yes. But this took it to another degree, though. Like, this was even... I feel like this was worse than that one. Like... Worse? Wor- worse as in, like... Worse. It just came out of... Romantic. How, how long like, it... Like, like how did you guys just become God. best friends now? Like, what? Did we just become best friends? Yep. Like, and it's... <laughs> best friends montage. Like, it, it was so... Um, the immediacy of it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's a thing. It's like um, 
So realism is not a strong suit in these movies, right? So they have to progress the story and a lot of key mm-hmm. elements will get cut. So all of a sudden they meet, you know, five minutes later, they're like BB, BBFs, right? Best friend, oh, BFFs, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. BFFs, <laughs> right? I think that's the acronym for something hey. else. I, think that's, hey, I don't hey, know no, what no, it is. No. So get your mind out of the garbage. That's yeah. right, Mike. We haven't, we haven't started our OnlyFans account yet. We haven't started our OnlyFans I don't account. know what that is, so moving on. <laughs> So uh, one thing I'll know is section, please. What? <laughs> James did point out the the length of this set piece, and I think from from watching other movies this year where we've said ah oh, they really didn't they, they cut cut some stuff and what, what's going on they let every single emotion that they wanted to to have like they let it like have in ten minutes they didn't say okay we like thor love and thunder they had a flashback so with that we could get connected with jane and thor and they gave it like like a minute and 45 seconds and they said this is their entire relationship in a minute 45 i hope you guys are invested whereas this they gave like 10 minutes for us to say hey guys just so you know these guys are best friends like you're not missing it right they're best friends yeah see so the thing is I don't know how to explain it because, like I said before, most Bollywood movies are elite, are about three hours long. Really? They make three of these, a, yeah, and they make they produce three of these a day in India. Three a day? Three a Do day. they sleep? Wow. So at least they were maybe ten years ago. I don't know, uh, pandemic wise wow. or whatever the rate was now, but it's about three a day they make, and people flock to the theaters because a lot of people are just poor, and you know the theaters are cheap. Mm-hmm. You go. And it's an escape, right? So you sit there for three mm-hmm. hours and you you know, you get the romance, you get the action, you get the dancing, the music, and it's just that escape, you know. Yeah. I mean, just like for us, but I think over here, could we sit through a four hour Thor movie? I don't think so. No. No way, I could. right? Yeah, it took, no. but it took could. ten years to build up to the three and a half hours that was the Avengers finale. Right. I don't fit. I don't. And I know. I know people will say Snyder cut, but that thing has not had the viewers that other things that are more normal yeah. two hour, two hour fifteen minutes have had. Lord of the Rings so. was three movies, three hours, and I watched it several times. It really depends. Never yeah, seen it. It depends on the content and if you're interested. Yeah. See, it has to be. Yeah. So, I mean, you're talking to Peter Jackson, who makes movies incredibly well. So if Peter Jackson, if you came to me and said, Peter Jackson's making a four hour, um, like, uh, um, what do you call Like a Lord of the Rings or some type of, uh, you know, um, grand scale movie, I'm mm-hmm. going to go see it, you know? Oh yeah, so, yeah, I get it. I don't think All I right, could sit so... through four hours of a type of movie though, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. It does. It does depend on the type type of movie and the tone and the feel and and this one moves. I was surprised. I when when we yeah. got about halfway through this movie, which is when we meet uh, Jenny and we uh, Jenna Jenna, um, we get the little comedy bits. The can't communicate between Bahim and Jenny, but Bahim's still on mission. But a nice, luckily, his new girlfriend lives in the place he's got a infiltrate wonderful coincidence for him um by the way her name is don't call me madam it's just jenny that's her full name that's right that's her full name (laughs) hey we should we should take a quick break though um i actually just i need to step away for a second and then let's come back and talk about jenny we'll talk about jenny and rom-coms when we get back all right Welcome back, everybody. And we will continue to our second half of our review of RRR. Now, after we get through the, the fun and the romance and the buddy comedy and the introductions, the fun and romance. It, gets a, it gets a little dark in the second half. Um, and so let's <laughs> kind of talk about how this... They, they really kind of let the um, <clears throat> British get a little, a little bastardly here in the, in the second half. 
especially the, the bastardly. British <laughs> bastardly. The uh, the wife of the uh, governor. I don't know why, but they decided to let that lady whip out a literal whip with spikes out of it out of nowhere. Um, for I don't know, it surprised it came, it came her, between her legs. She had it under she the mattress like, or something, right? <laughs> oh, that's what it was? I thought that was an inside joke that she pulled it out. Like, oh, I'm, I, okay, then I misread that. I don't know. Listen, I would assume she uses it in the bedroom, right? So That's what I, I yeah. There was no mattress. Yeah. 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 She had it well, they were on their balcony, her, their uh, upstairs patio, right? So it goes into yeah, their bedroom. Yeah, their upstairs that's what patio. It is. That's it. It was, that's it was, you know, I mean, they were whipping the guy in their backyard, so... True story. No, it was the town square or some joint. Yeah, it was the town was square, with like a par- like a parade a of- thing. <laughs> they almost they almost um um rioted. Yeah. So so what surprised me about this scene? So of course there's there's a torture scene. It's actually not as bloody as I might have thought it got <sighs> once she pulled that that whip out, but. The real surprising part was the decision to switch to a musical number in the middle of this uh, scene. Uh, what did you that guys think surprised. of this <laughs> this bait and switch? And, and this is this is where I'm going to put up that first time meme again. For, for Fred. <laughs> oh. It is absolutely <laughs> first time right here. Franco with the noose around his neck, look going first time. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Yeah, I know it's I mean, it's a weird they it's weird decisions to make uh, where to put these songs, right? Or where to have musical mm-hmm. numbers, but I don't know. Somehow it works. Yeah, that's it what I'm saying. It just doesn't feel out of place. I don't know how he's yeah. doing it. It's like there's some <laughs> magic to it. I guess when everything's big, it's okay if this is big too, right? Right. Um. But yeah, I mean so, that was a vicious right. scene, and when she pulled out the other whip, and uh, they <laughs> just they like, basically, I didn't get enough blood. <laughs> yeah, they uh, did a good job of making me of, of, of making you. Hate and I love problem. when you know he all he had to do was bend the knee, and the man bend channeled knee, like his that. inner. Uh, what do you? I don't know, super Saiyan mode or something, and he would not go down. The Hulkamaniacs, <laughs> the Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> You know, like Captain America was like, I could do this all day. All day. <laughs> I was waiting for him to yell freedom. Freedom! <laughs> freedom! Yeah. So, but... Such is the uh, that ch- it, it changes It changes Raju's mind on on what he... What is required to bring the people to power. And here, we start to get some of his backstory, which... I think is as horrible as any other other part of the story here on the on the point of the British. You get to learn about his dad and his dad um, being tortured, or someone in his dad's family being tortured. I forget who it was, um, and then his dad kind of getting people ready for rebellion, and then we get the the bullet thing back, and then he ends up having to like shoot his dad. So what? What about hold you on, guys? How is this? Get the important part. You skip the important part. His dad was actually in the same military and learned that line about saving the bullet. Right. Yeah. So at one point, his dad was in the militia or military, whatever mm-hmm, they were, mm-hmm. for the imp- imperial. And then I forgot how he got. Either he did something that he felt was morally wrong and quit, or I forgot what exactly got him to leave. The military, but then he left. It after was that, that it was the same bullet torture thing where, where the, he was going to shoot a yes. guy. He had to, yeah, supposed to shoot somebody, and then the white officer was like, "You're going to waste your, you know, how much it costs? It's like three sterlings or pounds, <laughs> whatever." So right. that led you to him living among mm-hmm. his own little people somewhere, and then the military coming back for him. So that's a key. No, know, it was a girl. Him. It was the mother of the girl, the mother of the girl who chased after the car. When she realized that she wasn't given that they weren't giving her the little the couple shillings because her her daughter painted and painted her hand yeah 
And it was both of those. That's a different backstory. She realized that, like, oh, like they just bought her daughter, but she was running after the car, this, that, and the other. And when, so when the when the leader dude told the, because the officer was going to just shoot her in her head. Yeah, he mm-hmm. said the same line. He stopped her, and and then he went and got like a log or some joint and just mm-hmm. yeah. Just so hold on, I think we're confusing two but different was, scenes the, here. The, the father. The father who was in the, that little battalion who saw that and it turned him off. No, the father one was the hammer. No. So the guy was against yeah. the tree and and instead of shooting him, they took a hammer to the dude. So there's two different oh, yeah, scenes. Yeah, yeah, one, yeah. one at the beginning yeah, yeah, with the yeah. woman yeah. with the log. Yeah. He was getting the one with the hammer. Like it was a public execution. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Correct. So but either way, so the father trains this group of people with wooden weapons without bullets and then he passes this this on to his son who is a crack shot <laughs> that was great and he's like we need um, to get weapons son we need to get more weapons great. remember that line he was telling me we need to get more weapons one day that yeah. line will carry over through and and then like when the british are coming and they they must have shot like 50 guys one shot up one shot each like that was a great scene like one at a time, pop, pop, pop. Um, but then he has I mean, to shoot at his. Mo- di- at one moment, I, I, I didn't think it was believable that they would take all that fire and not just give up and and high tail out of it. Then I realized, yeah. of course not, because they they wouldn't have pride to say, yeah, we didn't capture this one, you know, mm-hmm. brown skinned guy who who was a traitor to us. So they were willing to lose their men just to mm-hmm. succeed in that mission. So yeah, but they also read. They also change up. They go from a frontal assault to a, they're surrounding them uh, until the dad <laughs> <They> fall out. <laughs> right, but interesting. Once you finally get the backstory, and once the characters, you're with them as the characters are also getting these backstories and creating that emotional attachment and whatnot to each other. Um, yeah. So some good good story set up here, while uh, keeping keeping some interesting action going even even with the flashbacks i think this segment for me made me realize this was like a real movie it wasn't just like the bombastic stuff we're talking about in the dancing sequence i was like this mm-hmm. actual kernel of an actual story writing you know something of substance in this. at this point of the movie we're right almost halfway i think we are and i'm like i think this is right, just af- this is after really, the intermission yeah. this is all yeah yeah after okay. the second r or, or in between mm-hmm. that part yeah, this is, this is so. So you get this deep undercurrent backstory of emotion, and then you get, and it, it's really again we get another um, uh, trailer scene, which is the assault on the base in order to try to save the girl, with the with the animals coming out of the cages, and and then those two fight and battle over it. I think I skipped that. I think that was supposed hold to be on, right, Hold on, hold on. You, you skipped you know. a small, significant mm-hmm. scene before I trying to save the, the girls. When he realizes... No, no, you you're, you you fast-forward one crucial part. is when the two realize who they are. Because um, Bahim, I think his name was, who got snake bit, was no, Raju trying got to chase his snake. brother. Raju yeah, got snake right. bit, trying to chase... Um, what's his name's brother? Failed mm-hmm. in that mission. And then uh, what's his name's brother showed up and that's when he realized that he's the the the, the merc not the mercenary, but he's the villager that he's been looking for. And then, mm-hmm. and counterpoint to that, he realized he's a cop. He's trying to chase him. So that's yeah, he, before he, the scene rescuing his, his sister. Yeah, there's, there's there's so many little details in this because he doesn't he he gets bit, but uh, Bahim doesn't know he's a cop, but he tells him what he's about to do and so now Raju has to Raju knowing what his friend is and what he's doing but he also knowing his own mission he's got to make a decision and and basically um go against his friend and and capture him and that's where we get that great bombastic fight we get the animals you get the rooftop Get the whole shebang. Major set piece there. That's one of the major set, set pieces piece there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this um, is the reason why Easter egg. They had to put a disclaimer that no, 
animals. <laughs> no animals were oxen. hurt. And they even said oxen <laughs> was hurt in the making of this movie. So I have to say this about Baha Bali is that it the CGI between that and this it felt like a decades difference. I know it, I think it's probably just a money difference. But well, yeah, it's five like, years. Yeah, five years older too, right? Right. But even at the yeah. beginning, even the beginning of that, there's a baby and this lady's holding the baby above the tides. <laughs> and as the camera moves, the baby switches from a real baby to a CGI baby to a doll. Yeah, yeah I know. I a, remember. Yeah. Uh, to just a bunch of rags. And and you're going <laughs> and I'm, I'm like watching this like, what? What the hell? <laughs> like, just because it's so obvious. But. I understand where it's from and, and, and what you're trying to do and you're trying to mix those together and get it right. But this, the CGI work in this was solid. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't next level or anything like that. But it worked. Like the tiger worked for me. The leopard worked. The wolf worked. Yeah. You know, the wire work, the wire work of them flying around worked for me. It all, it all felt good. It felt within the story. It felt like it worked. Whereas in Bahu Bali, it was a lot more rough. Like the, you, it, it, you know, it felt like that '90s, early 2000s, you know, where you're like Jar Jar Binks does not belong in this scene. I can tell. Whereas Jar Jar didn't belong one, in any I felt, scene, so I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. The bull. The bull wasn't <laughs> fooling anybody. But in this one, I don't think it fooled it. Most people, but it looked better. It looked pretty good. It, especially like when it was in Raheem, uh, Bahim's face, like when they were face to face with the tiger. I was like, "That's really good shot. That was done really well." So yeah. I have to say this this movie was definitely a next a up upgrade for all the other from what I've seen before. It was really good. Um, so I think what we want to go is just talk about how we feel this, the, the, the whole cascading of these stories of the friends going to finding each other again, um, breaking out of prison and our final, our final fight where we get to finally slay all the British, which is what we really want. Right. That's what everybody <laughs> wants to do. Yeah. Kill Whitey. That's a, that's right. That's and right. Chris, Kill the British. Even quick, even us Americans can appreciate killing British people, right? Sure. <laughs> Colonialists. British that, colonialists. Be because, specific. <laughs> because it led it, it, a lot of the stuff led into like that big set piece of him trying to rescue his sister. I did not. I was not a fan of the sister. I don't know whether it's the actress or the character. Her whiny. Her like not listening. The little kid to what he saying. Yes, a little kid. You guys know me in all these movies. I always find you hate kids, so we know these, little, these kid <laughs> actors. She was so annoying, and Eric agreed with me. I'm like, your your brother can't rescue right now. You're behind bars. What do you want to do? He's, he's already putting his life at risk. He'll come back for you. She's like, no, nah, no. Nah. She kept whining and whining and whining. I just him to karate chop her in the head and put her to sleep. How dare sleep. she? How dare she whine from being imprisoned against her will by a bunch of white people? Dude, see, but that's but, but you gotta she add, was like, but she could have been a little more covert about it. Yeah, but then you remember you gotta I, add to the drama part of the Bollywood movie, right? You gotta have that was the drama part. The Dear drama God. part. That's the 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 sister is she's got to she's upset. She's got to emote that she's upset. And you have to do it and it's loud. You, yeah, you know what the drama and, was was when. His fiance shows up and she has to help them out. To me, that was drama. That was an adult actress emoting properly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like a little whiny kid. An adult actress playing an adult. She's playing a child. <laughs> a child who is scared, who's been stolen. Wait, 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 let, let's, let's move on, Chris, to your, your third act. Let's go. All right. Third if act. Kids so sense, if kids had so much sense, they wouldn't get stolen. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Woo, this is a so good cast. Be, I love it. To be to be fair, I mean, compared to the kids in Slumdog Millionaire, I mean, those kids in Slumdog were fantastic. So. <laughs> yes. See, there are some good yeah. child actors and actresses out there. Yes. Thank All you. Right. All right. So tell me, guys, how did you feel about the wrap up here? Did you feel like 
they got to Raju being a superhero. Did you did you <laughs> jump for joy when when Bahim ripped literally ripped the gate out of the ground? <laughs> and, and put his buddy on his shoulders, and they fought. Oh, yeah. As... I loved it. I, I loved from the moment when he was doing the beatbox. He was doing the beatbox Morse code. Dude, 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 dude. I love it from that moment on. I could watch that like 10, 10 more times. From when he's beatboxing on the on the wall of the a freaking um, pit, that was dope. Yeah, right. See, that, this movie put Batman v Superman to shame. It did. Now, it did. so what was what missing it, it, is that. It, is that is that Batman should have put Superman on his shoulders and then they should have fought against uh Do say, yeah. That entire Doomsday, fight scene yeah. was dope. Like but that wasn't I, even the I, end. That wasn't even no, the end. That was the penultimate <laughs> setup. And when he when he carried the guys, when he took the guns, right? And he's shooting two hands like this <laughs> on his shoulders. And then he goes down. And his friend he reloads the weapon. Reloads. reloads. The weapon. Yes, his friend reloads for him, dude. When they're climbing that tower, like a spider. Oh my flips. god! See, we I felt like get... all of that. I felt like all of that was awesome. That, I felt like that. that was a shot at the MCU and DC and all of American <laughs> Western Hollywood, Fast and Furious, all those guys. Take Look, notice. Amer- we should have got that Americans in, uh, can. John Wick Three. Sorry, ahead, we should have had. Keanu riding in on the dog, right? <laughs> I'm telling you. That's right. <laughs> Look, Americans cannot even take a superhero twerking. They are not going to accept oh, don't get me someone started. sitting God. on someone else's shoulders. They're so mad. They're so not gonna happen. Oh, my God. She's dancing. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so the finale, tell me you got what you thought about the buildup, the final battle, uh, Raju turning into... I don't know, some superhero with the ultimate Super Ryu. Um, Super Ryu. With with endless arrows. Rainbow. Yeah. It was so good. That was dope. That was dope. And it, we knew at this point everything would be over the top. But I wanted to see how over the top it would get. <laughs> like I was like, yes, more, more. And Did like picking up motorcycles. John, that was one of the John Wickiest scenes of the whole movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. Why yeah, pulling things when you away. pull an arrow out of another human being to shoot it again, you're good. <laughs> We're good. I the love arrow it. Through the the tree, the guys looking at it like at the oh, <laughs> like I the, I fucking kicked the it. Arrow the, <laughs> the final shot is the sun never sets on the British Empire and a blood splatter from the governor across it. I mean, it's not subtle. <laughs> Yeah, it's not so. Message. Oh. And then we get a wonderful little uh, dance party as our as our uh, themed play. Um, Which I watched in its entirety. I watched I the whole watch, thing too. I watched the rest of it. I didn't I couldn't stop watching. I was like, is there more? Is there another, like another another third? And I'm not a fan of musicals, as you guys know. So I I mean like that previous musical that they did, I li- only liked it because of the dancing number that they were doing, the battle dance. Right. I didn't care about the singing. But this one, I actually watched it in entirety because it was because it, it was more like a thank you. You see all the cast and crew that were involved, and they were all except for um, what's his name? Who played the British governor? Oh, that's yeah. Uh, they didn't the, show him. American <laughs> actor. Yeah, he's an American actor. We've seen him other things. Yeah, too. that's Ray Stevenson. He's been uh, Ray, well, Ray he's Stevenson. Australian. Ray, he was Ray actually Stevenson. in Thor. He's 1. the Punisher. Yeah, he yeah, was a Punisher. Punisher. He was also right. the Punisher. <laughs> He's, a, he, so. he's the only face I couldn't find in that whole um, marathon. Yeah, right even now. Jenny got a chance to, to to shake it there. Jenny did. Mm. Jenny did. So, so do you think that Jenny and what's his name hooked up at the end? Absolutely. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. So, I Mike, do you know the communication I, I, just wasn't working? That's the part that I didn't like. Yeah. I kind of wanted Mike, him to have like, I think the so. Indian. Yeah, I think they shoehorn that in. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't think. That. I think they shoehorn a interracial um, yeah. relationship where they couldn't speak, but they were like trying to through language of love. But I think other, I think that like, was nah, that working. was how he was going to get into the house, right? 
Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's, but he didn't know. He didn't know it was that way. He didn't know it was, it was that way. Right. Obviously, he no. Didn't he did. Smitten by her when that's he was smitten by her when so he first that, saw her. They wrote it so that that's his way into the house. Oh, um, you mean how the writers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I dig. I, I understand so, what. But not how he saw it as it developed on on screen. Like he he was smitten by her from the beginning. Yeah. And yeah. then he realized that she was. Yeah. As a plot vehicle, I definitely understand why they used it. I just don't like that particular. I don't. And it, the movie was already making me mad. And then like and then like that like kind of like pandering to the enemy kind of I just I didn't like it. Yeah, but she was the nice one nice person, I think and, was the, and they were trying to point out. Yeah, but she accepted nice a, a slave. Basically she accepted a one slave. Nice person? Yeah. That's she accepted the the girl, that's see? Cool. That's what white people do. They do that that one nice oh like she's just nice, but like she's coddling she, she literally knows that the little girl, she knows that the little girl is a stolen little girl. <laughs> yes, you're an accomplice. I was her, That's all right. Cry. James, it's James okay. told that little girl to shut the hell up. He's no better. <laughs> you know what I'm let, let her scream, nice woman. You the nice one. Nah. I so, quest, question, I Mike. Uh, I know, I know, I know. These two guys are based on actual real revolutionaries do you know any of the backstory uh their real backstories or anything like that no. <laughs> i have no clue just so i don't know because we we from they afar are, don't actually yeah. know the politics so a lot mm-hmm. of the stuff we can be watching it could be fun and joyful or whatever and you don't get yeah, as, the political some of the political commentary as a fellow That's victim all. of the american public school system i know as much as you guys <laughs> so, that's right. Here, so, here, here, here. Maybe a little Looks more. Looks like a YouTube deep dive. Family dies. stories, but that's it. <laughs> family yeah. Stories. So, another YouTube dip, deep dive um, from our friends mm-hmm. in superhero media. <laughs> deep dive. <laughs> deep <laughs> dive. <laughs> deep <laughs> dive. Hold on, Keith. Did you? Oh. I'm not the only one. Yeah, I'm not the only one. I heard that. <laughs> wow. You guys are are bad tonight. Wow. A major pause on that one. <laughs> you know, deep dicking. <laughs> oh, good lord. Wow. <laughs> what? Let's not get demonetized before we're monetized. Yeah, and I, I was going to announce our affiliate sponsor tonight, but I guess we're not, so... <laughs> No, I'm not gonna yeah, let's wait till we like stop that. recording. So, uh, is Moving it Megan on. the Stallion is is our is sponsoring us? <laughs> I mean, I'll take her money. <laughs> I'll put my opinions aside and accept the cash. That's right. All right, let's let's give everybody any final words and a grade for uh, RRR. Uh, I'm gonna start with Mike. So I'm gonna rate this not on a scale of movies, but on a scale of Bollywood films. So as I have okay. a reference are, okay. of other Bollywood movies, are, say again. Aren't Bollywood movies. movies movies though? Yeah, but gonna I'm going to put this. Scale. I'm going to grade it in the category of Bollywood movies only. No, he he feels like he can't go against his peoples here. So go ahead. So <laughs> as a as no, because yeah, there's a reason Sorry, because I've I've seen other ones in the past and how I've seen a lot better ones and I've seen a lot worse ones. So I'm going to give this a, a B minus based on that scale. Like if I would no. compare this movie to ho- mainstream Hollywood, you know, it doesn't really mm-hmm. rank that high, but it's still a decent film. But I'm going to right. rank it in in the genre of Bollywood, right? All right. James. I, I knew I lost her after the Westbrook and the <laughs> Lakers um, analogy, which was very apropos. For me... I'm going to give this an A minus. I was extreme. And I'm giving it an A minus for three factors entertainment value, story, and action sequence. Like I do any, whether it's MCU or The Godfather, I'm going to stick with that A minus. Oh. You see, Getting you, close you, to, you, to you Godfather have, levels. You have the same so grade. As, as an A triple plus. But, uh, yeah. You have the same grade for romances? What happened? You have the same romance? Grade, grade, grading categories for all movies? Yes. Yeah, I pretty much do, too. 
but what about movies that don't have action, aren't supposed to have action? No, I'm, I'm giving the validity of my grade by using three factors. Other movies that I give an A, it could be different. It could be character, acting. Like, The Godfather doesn't have that much action. It's always three factors. At the minimum, there's three factors, yeah. By the way, I've sent right. the pod a photo that you and I are going to recreate of um, from this movie. It's on our HBM channel. <laughs> you and I. Can, oh, no. I'm getting a bike. I'm renting a bike. Kawasaki. And a, a bike and a horse, huh? So if the two of you are playing the Indian guys, so I have to play the British guy then? Yes. Okay. Full <laughs> reversal. All right, Keith. Final thoughts. Great. I'm gonna go ahead and give it uh, a minus, B plus. No, I just I was just interested in your grading um, principles criteria. Um, yeah, my fault criteria. Um, I felt like it was it, it hit on the marks. It was entertaining. The action was was compelling. The story was also compelling and pulled you in as 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 fantastical as everything was around it. Like I like I said at the beginning, I think like the core of it was a good movie. Like it had it had all the core elements of what a good movie starts out with and like keeps throughout. You can build anything on top of that. And I think that that's what they did. And even the building on top of it was dope. Like I look at it like even even some of the CGI things like okay, you're doing a flying kick and you you're going a little bit too far like this like okay now <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't believe there's any other like but it's almost like it's purposeful to the outlandishness that you're trying to paint paint like serious outlandishness but the the storyline you kept me involved like especially for three hours. I know you're saying, Mike, that those are like normal, normal times. It's actually a short film. If I'm, <laughs> it's a short film. If I'm gonna stay engaged for three hours, like it, it, nine times out of ten, it's gonna be a good movie. Like there's no way you're getting to watch. You know, you, honestly, you'd be surprised because, especially when I was a kid, because I was born in New York, I raised in New York. Everything's about you know about me as a New Yorker, and and. You know, I'd go to my grandparents' house and they'd pop in these Bollywood movies and it would be like, why the hell would I want to watch this? But you start watching. <laughs> you, I don't I don't speak Hindi. I don't speak the language. But you start watching. You read. Sometimes they have subtitles. Sometimes you just follow along with the story without subtitles. And you find yourself engaged in what's happening. And it's surprising. So mm. That's good storytelling. Yeah, exactly. That's, good story. That's yeah. universal. Yeah. Storytelling. Universal. Yeah. yeah. That's the yeah. one thing that I appreciate with any piece of content, whether it's a comedy, it's a romance, it's, it's, it's adventure, it's action. Like, yo, your ability to tell a story without me needing to listen and understand every word. Right. That's an art. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. an art. All right. Well, I guess for me, um, everything mm. is purposeful in this. It's not like... Well, uh, we made extra long slow mo action sequences, but everything's going to be like this or that. Like everything got the same treatment, and I appreciate that. Um, I did think I felt like I was missing a little bit of emotional attachment, like I like in in some in some a lot of the movies we watch where the western characters... movies say a lot of western, western movies. Western okay. movies. Okay. Sure, why not? Like I like I said. I, We've watched uh, Korean drama this year. We've watched Japanese, Chinese, now now Indian. We've we've gotten a little bit more uh, international with some of the stuff we watch. Not like we're constantly watching everything that comes out, but we're getting as Netflix specifically has done a good job of bringing us content yes, from other that places. Is true. That is true. And we get the best of that content, obviously. You know, Squid Game, that was some of the best stuff we watched on TV last year. And, mm. you know, so, and the same thing here, uh, I liked how big it was. Uh, I liked the look of it. Very pretty to watch. The costumes were amazing, locations. But, like I said, I, 
didn't quite get into it emotionally like I've gotten into other movies I've watched this year. And, you know, I I wouldn't mind if it was edited a bit. <laughs> I did feel like some of the scenes were let to go on a, long, a little long. Even if that's the decision, even if that's the style, doesn't have to mean that I approve of it completely. But, you know, whatever. So I'm going to go with a B plus, actually. I really... Like, the entertainment value itself kept me in. You Like you said, Keith, the story of the guys and their connection and, and what they were doing, they did it really well. Even if the bad guys were just flat mush, mustache twirlers. That's fine. Like, that's what they wanted to do. So I, I'm just going to go with B+. I think it's a really fun, great watch. My suggestion watch it with people who like to talk about the movies they're watching. Cause this thing, when I, when I was like trying to tell, whenever I try to tell somebody what I just watched, I feel like I'm having more fun than even when I was watching it. I just enjoy talking about the movie. And so like, I did not I actually watch this one by myself with my headphones on. And I was like, what? What? Like I was, I was really like leaning towards the screen as I was watching it, and so, like, get a group of people, sit down on the biggest screen possible, get some popcorn, get some alcohol in you if you want, and just like have a great time. This thing I can imagine sitting down in like a theater full of people and just enjoying the hell of it. Like this is definitely that kind of movie. I so. Agree. You know, it's probably the most watchable B plus I've watched this year. Like I would definitely, if someone said, "Hey, we're all gonna watch," you know, R R R, I'd be like, "Hell yeah, I'm gonna watch that shit." So that'd be my suggestion. All right, guys, that's it. That's R R R. Wow, it's, it's a lot to talk about. R R R. It's not a pirate mood. All right. I want to thank everybody for joining me, for joining us on this wonderful Tuesday night. No, Thursday night. Shit. <laughs> I lost a few days. Thursday. We normally work on Tuesdays. All right. Mike, where can everybody find us to comment on this movie and how they watched it and how many people they watched it with? Uh, so, yeah, leave a comment uh, at uh, where all over social media at Heroes Peak, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. TikTok and YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell in the corner for notifications. Leave a comment below. Let, let, below. let us know if you've seen RRR, what you think. Uh, think of Bollywood movies. If uh, if you think we should review more of them, we'd like to know. Because there's Netflix has been adding a ton of them. I sent some recommendations to Chris. Hopefully he'll check them out and we can uh, talk about them in the future. Yeah, and this, this can't just be Tony or an angel leaving comments. Others out there lurkers please leave a comment let's start the bait and chats both on youtube and on twitter let's do that please it's all right all right thanks everybody you have a great week see you later i'm just texting names <laughs> <Good night. laughs> hey, hey. indigo made the beat man.